There we go. What's up, guys? So, as I mentioned, this is going to be relatively informal. Um, I say as I mentioned, if you've got me on Instagram, I'm not going to try and sell any of that to you now. So, um, these are just going to be chats. This is just me talking about subjects that you guys have asked me to talk about. I might do some reviews of my own training on here as well, but we'll see. Um, like I say, none of this is going to get cut. None of it's going to be edited, just a raw clip. Um, and the one I've just been asked to talk about is peaking protocols. So it's worth initially differentiating, like if we're talking about prep for comp or if it's just within a training cycle going for some heavy singles. And we, we have a few different models these days and some of it's a little bit outdated. Um, so if we go old school, right, let's say it used to be you do some fives, threes, a single, then you take like a week off of training you practice your openers, you do like 60% for some doubles and then you compete. And this, this model's pretty outdated. Um, because what we're doing is we're, we're taking all of the information we had from training and we're scrapping it. We're gonna do something we've never done in training and do it just a week out from competition. Um, and this, the idea of this is like this super compensation, right? People say, oh, I've gone really, really hard. I'm absolutely wrecked. I might have missed some stuff in training. Like, couldn't even get the reps. RP10 on everything. Now I'm going to take a week off, recover loads so my body's as prepped as, as it's ever going to be. But what you will have found and what you should be looking for, oh, fucking thing. Um, what you should have found is that at points in your training, you, you've had a pattern, right? When you're at your best. And this data, this what did I do in training that made me my best, this is what we should be using going into comp. So that might be, well, um, an emerging strategies point of view, right? Looking at this, the polar opposite is, I was doing sevens on my squat and my singles were going up, so I should keep doing that. Um, and I lean more towards this ethos, this, this training principle. Um, so what we look for is we look for data trends. Um, and when we talk about a block of training, Oh, excuse the yawning. We're looking for when training goes up and down over um, amount of exposures to the same thing. So let's simplify that. This can be four to six, sometimes a little bit longer, weeks of doing something, whether that be, let's say, uh, a double on your squat followed by fours. And we do that same thing at varying uh, RPEs and intensities, but that same thing for around four to six, maybe longer weeks. And what we'll see, regardless of exactly what's happening in that session, is how it impacts your estimated one rep max. Does that go up or down? Are we performing better or worse? And we tend to see something like um, relatively low at the beginning because it's a new stimulus and an adaptation, so a bit of a sharp jump. Potential de um, a drop off because an increase in load, um, but uh, a slight slowing down from the adaptation initially and then potentially uh, the last week or the last couple of weeks, we might see an upward trend. Some people will see a pattern more towards an up, a big drop off, and then a last bit of up. And that tends to be how we can, we can prep for competition uh, more specifically. We can see that in a data trend. So that might mean I know, for instance, my squat falls best on its fourth exposure, my deadlift on its third, and my bench on its fourth as well. And so I can plan my training around that. So what that model of training means going into competition, that we, excuse me, we train the whole way, right? So we, we have no valuable data that tells us to stop training going into competition. Um, in fact, all of our data that we have ever achieved in training for most beginner and intermediate lifters says we hit every PR we've ever hit when we were still training. We didn't take a random week off and then hit our best. Um, and so that's where that pattern falls. Now, the middle ground, and this tends to be the, the more simplistic model, and it's somewhat logical, is between these two, right? So let's say we've got, I'm, I swear I'm not nervous. Um, we've got weeks of doing singles going into competition. So that might be, uh, when I say at six, um, so I'm talking about the RPE scale. If you don't know the RPE scale, comment below and I'll find you a link to explain it properly, I'm not doing that right now. So this might be, going into comp we have, uh, sing, single at six, single at seven, single at eight. Now this last bit is depending, uh, in my eyes, on how the lifters responded in the past. Did they respond best if they did one more single at eight and then they had the last single as competition? Or would they do better if we dropped some of that intensity off and then into competition, so single at seven, 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 eight, or six, seven, eight, eight. You get the idea, right? These are the variables. Um, but the logical bit within 
most frameworks, and you'll see this from people, um, most of the, your main com main companies in powerlifting at the moment, you probably see some of their templates, but effectively we're going to use that same data trend, but we're going to use the logic of saying, well, reducing some volume probably helps. So yes, you were doing fives and you were trending really well. Um, and, oh, excuse me, the last week's fives were at an RP7, but logically, rather than make a plus five jump or anything, we might repeat those fives, but do them as fours. We might go a slight increase, but a, a drop off in the number of sets. What we're gonna look for is a means of mitigating some of the fatigue we're accumulating. Now, we still wanna keep that same stimulus because that stimulus has been proven to work for us. That's why we're using it. Um, but I've just realized there's an ND filter on this camera. This is probably really dark. Um, but we, we logically find that reducing some of the total volume, some of the intensity in other areas where it's not necessary. So if you've got leg press work at high intensity and you've been running that, we might drop off some of that accessory work. We might drop off some of the bigger bits. Now, not completely because again, data suggests it was beneficial. So these models are kind of the three points. We go the extreme end of emerging strategies. This is companies like RTS and where we talk about what does, what does your training show? Well, let's just do that. If it's not broke, don't fix it, don't change it. Then we look at uh, someone old school, uh, some newer coaches or more towards the, the PT's end. Um, and if you do this, it's not to say that you're dumb, but I would, I'm not trying to be offensive, but look at other models, look at um, what the data actually suggests in their training. Let's not just jump to the whole deload principle, but this end of the spectrum then is train incredibly aggressively, push very, very hard, usually within a realm of technical breakdown, then rest a lot, practice openers. That's the thing I'll talk about another time. I hate that personally. Um, practice openers and then go compete. Un untrained for a week, mode pattern breakdown, not a fan. And then we have the middle ground, which is taking some logical rest where possible, reducing areas of fatigue, not a lot, but reducing areas to make sure we go into comp as well as we can, play it off the data trends we've talked about, and then you go into comp well-trained, excuse me, off the data, you should be at your best. You should have predictable jumps, predictable openers, predictable standards, and your motor pattern should still be well built. We haven't taken a week off, so your bench still feels second nature because you probably did it two or three days ago. That's your three models. I very much sit towards this end of the spectrum. Um, if you want to discuss it further, send me a message and we'll chat through those. I hope that's helpful. I hope you like the video. Hopefully these off the peak, off, off the cuff chats are of some help, and if they're not, tough shit, I'm gonna do them anyway. I'll speak to you beautiful people soon. Peace.